Hey everyone, today we will be previewing the Australian Open final. We've, you know, we've got a thriller on our hands. It will be the world number one, Novak Djokovic versus Daniil Medvedev. Medvedev has already secured the world number three and with a win in Australia, he will become the new world number two. Could he become a world number one later on this year? That's for, that's for the future. But yeah, this is the dream final, I would say. Definitely the two best hardcore tennis players in the world right now. Novak Djokovic needs no introduction and Daniil Medvedev as well needs no introduction. He has been on an absolute hot streak which actually began uh, at the back end of last year in Paris followed by uh, the World Tour Finals victory where he went undefeated that week uh, winning you know all five matches all of them against top eight players in the world and then the ATP Cup with uh, Andre Rublev that is quite a bit of a dream pairing for Russia and I can see years of dominance uh, or you know really good performances from Team Russia in both the ATP Cup and the Davis Cup and I mean you know you've got that um, wonderful story of Karatsev another Russian let's hope that this isn't just a uh, like a one-off uh, because I really enjoyed watching his story unfold. We don't get a lot of that in men's tennis, I feel. Uh, it's always the same names at the back end of tournaments. So it was really refreshing seeing a qualifier ranked outside the world, uh, world top 100 making it so far and really did put a good showing against Novak in the semi-finals uh, as well. Now I must say, that I am really sorry I haven't been releasing content lately I've been reading your comments and honestly it does mean a lot so much support uh, you guys asking when am I gonna come back when am I gonna make videos and honestly it does really uh, mean a lot to me it's just you know sometimes sometimes life gets in the way you don't always have time I have been super busy uh, with work and other things going on in my life right now and you know I have been watching the Australian Open I watched all the uh, ATP Cup as well it's just I just didn't have time to release content or you know you need to do research and uh, things before you release a video I didn't just want to release half-assed videos where there was no information no stats uh, nothing really of note and worth your time so I thought instead of those type of videos uh, I'll just lay low for a little bit and you know in the back of my mind I was always going to release something before before the final so I must uh, once again apologize to everyone but also at the same time thank you for your patience and your kind words um, and yeah it does mean a lot and by no means I am you know stop stopping making videos or anything like that I can't guarantee how often or how frequent they will be but I will be there for the big tournaments uh, and we will have that tennis quiz don't worry that will be something that happens but yeah, I don't want to take too much time away from the reason why I'm here, why you're all here. It is the Australian Open Final 2021. And for the first time, I would say um, Novak Djokovic, to a lot of people, is entering this final as the slight, slight underdog. Uh, I've been looking at men's tennis forum, even uh, all sorts of polls, etc. A lot of people seem to be backing Medvedev and... It's, it's not surprising. He is on a 20-match unbeaten streak. I mean, one player's unbeaten run is going to fall on Sunday. Medvedev, as you know, is on a 20-match unbeaten run in all tournaments, starting from Paris last year. Uh, and really, it has been a bit of a turnaround because we all know that great summer he had in 2019. And then 2020, uh, he didn't really live up to the hype. He didn't um, perform to that level he had in the summer. His ranking would have probably dropped uh, had he not been for the COVID ranking, but then he really stepped it up again, reached the US Open semi-finals, uh, lost to team, of course. Uh, but then in Paris, myself included, no one really expected Medvedev to win. He won Paris. Uh, and then in London, once again, you know, coming off the back of Paris, he had a bit of momentum. But if you remember the previous year, he lost every single match in London uh, and that match against Rafa where he was 5-1 up. Uh, in the third set and ended up losing that match which must have hurt him quite a lot so yeah big big turnaround for him he won London undefeated beat Novak of course in that tournament as well then of course uh, won the ATP Cup so he is on an incredible run right now 20 match unbeaten streak and he also uh, is the sixth active player to go on such a streak the other five is of course the big three Rafa, Roger, Novak, uh, and Andy Murray and Juan Martin Del Potro have achieved uh, that out of the active players. 
Novak Djokovic, he's on a 20-match unbeaten streak of his own, but in the Australian Open, he's the two-time defending champion, um, he, you know, trying to be a three-time back-to-back uh, -back champion. Of course, it will be his ninth Australian Open if he wins. So as well as that 20-match Australian Open uh, unbeaten streak, he also has that 8-0 in finals unbeaten run as well. As you know, uh, every time Novak Djokovic has reached the semi-finals, he's gone on to win the tournament. It's a little bit like Rafa at the French Open. Every time he's reached the semis, he's gone on to win the tournament. So something is about to give. Either it will be Novak Djokovic's records or the new Medvedev's unbeaten run. Looking at their head-to-head, -head, Novak does lead the head-to-head 4-3. -head However, that doesn't paint the entire picture. Uh, Novak, you know, he won the first three matches of the head-to-head beginning probably when Medvedev you know he wasn't the player he is now their first match was actually in the Davis Cup and funnily enough the first ever set went towards Medvedev he won that first set and every match between the pair have been it's, it's not been like a super one-sided one-sided affair I'd say probably the match in London was the most one-sided uh, out of all of them Medvedev out of the last four matches has won the last three um, but he's never beaten Novak in a Grand Slam. They've only faced once in a Grand Slam, which was in the Australian Open a couple of years ago, which Novak won in four sets. That set he dropped to Daniil Medvedev was actually only uh, one of two sets he dropped in the entire tournament. Uh, he lost the other one to Denis Shapovalov in the previous round before. So yeah, Novak leads the head-to-head 4-3, but I wouldn't read too much into that head-to-head. -head. If anything, in recent times, uh, Daniil has had the upper hand, but they've all been close. Uh, if you remember that Cincinnati win uh, almost a couple, a year, a year and a half ago now, uh, Novak was leading a set and a break, and then Daniil Medvedev started serving first serves for both his serves and ended up turning around that match. Their match at the ATP Cup last year was one of, one of the best three set matches uh, of the year and uh, in London of course the new one in straight sets however Novak probably not playing playing to his best level if you look at some other stats of course look you can't really compare the two because I'd say they're different generations Novak is leading on everything basically he is of course uh, one of the big three he has 17 Grand Slam titles the new Medvedev has zero uh, this is Novak's 28th Grand Slam final. This is Daniil Medvedev's second. His first uh, was against Rafa, where in the US Open 2019, in part of that incredible summer Medvedev was having, he he lost the opening two sets. A lot of us, you know, myself included, thinking it'd be a straight set affair. He did end up winning the next two against Rafa, and you know, had his chances in the fifth, but uh, couldn't couldn't see it home. He himself has said in the interviews that he takes a lot of experience from that match he had against Rafa. So, you know, this time, if things were going in the same direction, if it's a tight match, fourth, fifth set, uh, he believes he has that experience. At the same time, Medvedev in his conference did come out and say that, of course, Novak has more experience, but he has more to lose as well. Uh, I don't know if it's mind game, but he was kind of saying that all the pressure is on Novak to win. He really has nothing to lose. Now, for me personally, I believe both of them have pressure. Um, look, Medvedev does want to win his first slam. Yes, the experience is definitely on Novak's side, but Medvedev does have a little experience now having been uh, at this stage before. It's not like the US Open final. Um, Novak Djokovic really wants the, the, the slam to get that closer to uh, Rafa and Roger, who are three ahead. If he didn't win Australia, it's definitely not the end of the whole uh, slam race. Uh, because you know there, there's still plenty of opportunity in the future but Novak would definitely want to win this Australian Open and keep that aura uh, he has in the Australian Open each of the big three have their own favorite slam Novak's being the Australian Open uh, Rafa is the French Open and Roger is of course Wimbledon and Novak's record at the Australian Open is actually uh, second in let's say the big threes list so Rafa has a hundred wins in France with two losses giving him a win percentage of 98% Novak has 81 wins in Australia and eight losses that's a win percentage of 91% uh, Sampras actually had 63 and 7 in Wimbledon which was a 90% win record and Roger has 101 to 13 at Wimbledon which is 88.6% so uh, really in tennis, it is widely accepted that the hardest task is to play Rafa at the French Open. 
and probably the second hardest task is to play Novak at the Australian Open, especially at the deep end where his, you know, his game just elevates and takes him to that next level. For Daniil Medvedev, he can achieve a lot. Uh, from his 20 wins, 12 of those have come against top 10 opponents. That's an incredible uh, achievement. And he's actually defeated all of the top 10, except Roger Federer, who hasn't been playing because of injury. Um, but yeah, this would be Medvedev's biggest title. As I said earlier on, it would take him to world number two. And if he became the world number two, he would be the first player other than Roger Federer, Rafa Nadal, Novak Djokovic and Andy Murray to become the world number two in the last 16 years. That's mind boggling. Uh, and it really put him in a good place because he doesn't defend a lot in uh, in, in, in in the clay. So he could uh, challenge for that number one spot. He won't be too far away from Novak if he was to win. If you look at his career titles though, um, he's won nine titles. Uh, the big ones really are the World Tour Finals, his biggest title, and then he's won three Masters 1000s uh, in Paris, Shanghai, Cincinnati, all of those on hard court. So clearly this is his favorite uh, surface. And in fact, looking at his other uh, titles, all nine of his titles have come on indoor indoor or outdoor hard courts. So uh, he really enjoys the hard courts. I want to quickly look at the routes both players have uh, taken to get to the final Novak Djokovic a bit of a topsy-turvy uh, probably the most dramatic uh, of routes in in a grandstand that I can remember at least um, he started off very well Jeremy Shardy straight sets performance against Francis Tiafu he was taken to four sets however still a very good showing third round against Fritz and this is where all the drama really began he was two sets to love up had that abdominal uh, issue looked like he was going out but then uh, he dropped the next two sets but then won the fifth set there was a lot of talk did he fake the injury etc now in my opinion why would someone fake an injury when they're two sets to love up uh, and really you know one foot into the next round already i just don't see why someone would do that if he was two sets to love down and then he uh, he was complaining about an injury and somehow ended up winning then perhaps you can say there was a bit of mind mind games in place but for me it just doesn't make logical sense for someone to fake an injury when they're two sets to love up and pretty much cruising um, you know and and you have to remember all three of the big three they're they're mental giants right so even though he just dropped the next two sets you have to imagine that um, they still have belief of of getting through Fritz you know the closer he got to the finishing line he you'd you'd expect his level to drop as well so in my opinion I don't think Novak faked the injury uh, he perhaps thought it was worse than it actually is um, because I'd like I don't think he tore that muscle uh, but he said he's not gonna speak until after the final so I mean we'll see we'll see what the real uh, diagnosis is there but yes, yeah, he came through that match against Fritz and then it was a question of will he, won't he, uh, will he even play against Milos Raonic? He came out, uh, you could see that he wasn't 100% but he still won and for me probably a good matchup for Novak at that stage because uh, it, it was a matchup that clearly favours Novak. I believe he was 11-0 and 0 in the head-to-heads. Raonic has never beaten Novak uh, in his career so it was almost like the perfect match there for Novak. Uh, he had a couple of days rest, played that match, he had another couple of days and then the real challenge was Sasha Zverev in the quarterfinals because you knew Sasha was going to you know make the rallies long make Novak run around Sasha's you know uh, ranked sixth or seeded sixth for the tournament he wasn't going to be a pushover uh, he played well in the ATP Cup Sasha did uh, and he was looking good in Australia as well but Novak came through that and that was probably the the biggest hurdle that Novak had to had to get through he won that match he dropped a, a set in that and Sasha actually had uh, he was break points ahead in both the third and the fourth set so maybe a little bit of a mental block there uh, helping Novak uh, get the get the victory now in the semi-finals we all knew the fairy tale story that Karatsev was going through however uh, my slack, I didn't really think that he had enough to beat Novak it was a great run uh, a great story but you just knew Novak would find a way and he looked really well against Karatsev winning in straight sets he said after the match that it was the best he has felt. Uh, so definitely he's back now. So in the final, I don't expect uh, that injury to play up again. Uh, and he's, he's playing really well. So I don't think that will be an issue in the final whatsoever. And I mean, look, he's had a lot of rest now. He's had uh, well two full days 
uh, off going into the final he hasn't been practicing in between matches so so you know that uh, that strategy has been working but he did say he will practice uh, the day before the final and yeah he he beat Karatsev in straight sets coming into the final and he's definitely I'd say peaking and one thing you can probably say is a positive from all of this is that he's now felt the worst he has right so uh, every match that he comes on he'll probably in the back of his mind think of the Fritz or the Raonic match where he didn't feel so well and now he may feel even better about himself. I don't know if I'm wording it correctly, but um, he's been through the gutters and now he's come out of the other end. So, uh, so yeah, that's Novak. Daniel Medvedev, opening match, you know, against Pospisil, not the, not the easiest of round one ties, but he came through that in straight sets. Uh, also against Roberto Caballas Baena in the second, second round, came through in straight sets. And then the blip of the, of the tournament happened. You know, Medvedev, by the way, has not lost a single set in this tournament except for this match, the third round match. He was cruising 6-3, 6-3 up against Krajinovic, of course, uh, another Serbian. And then somehow, I don't know what happened. Um, I did not watch this match. And to be honest, I haven't watched a lot of uh, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. matches in the UK. But um, he lost the next two sets. And then all of a sudden, he's in a fifth. Would have been probably one of the, like, yeah, the biggest shock of the tournament. Um, but yeah, he ended up winning the fifth set very comfortably, six love. Uh, and then since then has not looked back against McDonald in the last 16 straight sets. Now the quarterfinal for me, this was the, you know, the toughest quarterfinal matchup. Uh, I thought Rublev has been playing excellently uh, in the ATP Cup as well. And I thought he would actually challenge Daniel Medvedev. However, Medvedev winning that match in straight sets. I believe he's never lost to Rublev as well. Uh, I don't think he's even lost a set to Rublev. So clearly it's a matchup he prefers. Uh, but I was very surprised to see it go in straight sets. And then in the semi-finals against Stefanos Tsitsipas, straight sets again. In the third set, it did look like Stefanos might, um, you know, turn things around again. He was... Uh, he, you know, he broke back to get back on uh, back on track on the third set, and then he had break point on Daniel's uh, serve at 4-3 in the third. Uh, couldn't convert, and yeah, Daniel Medvedev won that match in straight sets. So he is looking very, very good. Sitsipas, I don't know if he looked a little bit tired in the semi-finals. He of course came back from two sets to love down against Rafa, the second ever man uh, to do that to Rafa in a Grand Slam. The uh, other being Fabio Fonini at the US Open in 2015. 2015, I believe, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, incredible achievement coming from two sets to love down. Uh, and, you know, he looked very dejected in that press conference. He he was saying that, you know, you could just tell by his body language. Uh, but, I mean, look, he's a young guy, 22 years old only. Uh, he'll have many more opportunities. This was his third semi final. Uh, yet to reach a final he had a lot of praise for Daniel a lot was made before the match because you know they have history we all we've all seen the video of Daniel Medvedev going sort of after him after a match uh, where Sitsipas said 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 some things uh, so yeah it was always going to be a feisty affair but this match didn't perhaps live up to the expectations or the tight tight matches we we expected but yeah Sitsipas again falls short at the semi-finals but I'm sure his time uh, will come so yeah this match really um, it's it's anybody's game even if you look at the the odds it's almost 50 50 um, this is the tightest odds given for a Novak final in the Australian Open I mean against Rafa a couple of years ago where Rafa was looking insane Novak still had 56 percent um, you know as as favorite this match really is 50 50 and if you look at some of the forums Medvedev is actually ahead in terms of what people are predicting so it's very very tough to call this final there's a lot of things that could happen Novak you know I, I said I don't think his injury will be will be any issue in this final but your injury always like it's a mental thing i feel when you're down you sometimes you know, all that sort of thing but uh, when you're ahead you don't even think about it so it'll be interesting to see when when the things go tough um in that final novak has been serving amazingly well he's he's the he's the top acer in the tournament uh, uh basically he's got the most aces you don't really associate that kind of stat with Novak he has been serving incredibly well even against Karatsev in a three setter he served 17 aces uh, and against Tiafu he served the most aces he has ever done um, 
uh, which which is 26 aces in that match so really really good serving from novak djokovic medvedev look i don't need to say anything he has been the man to beat in the last few months absolutely you know tearing the field beating every single person he's beaten the last uh, in the last 20 matches he's beaten all of the top 10 you know excluding roger who hasn't played i also think medvedev's game style uh, suits suits for for novak i think it's a bad matchup for novak it's kind of they're very similar players i would say just 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 by watching them um they get everything back very consistent they rarely make mistakes uh, medvedev he has a very unorthodox and unique game style i'll try to put a picture of one of his backhands you know that that amazing backhand pass he hit against uh, stefanos to get that break in the third set for six five uh, just the way he holds the racket is just you how how is he so good i can't, I, I cannot explain it uh, but yeah for me personally it's it's a straight toss up if i had to predict someone uh, only because of um let's say what i've seen in the past it's the same way that you wouldn't really bet against rafa at the french open i would still put novak as the slight favorite but this is very very slight like it's it's um 50.1 percent to 49.9 and you know it, it could be one-sided medvedev might uh fold under the pressure same way he might come out all guns blazing straight set novak you, you, you don't know with this match it really is a 50 50 in my opinion uh but simply because of everything uh, that novak has achieved it'd be unfair to not make him the slight favorite in this match and then it would really open up the rest of the season uh, and the whole slam race i don't think the goat debate will uh, will ever finish in in our lifetimes i think people will always find things to uh, to argue about so uh, that will never never conclude in my opinion but the slam race is very interesting uh, and definitely something that novak can uh, get a bit closer to as you know he has already confirmed that he will become the lead uh, male player in terms of weeks at number one the current record is Roger, of course, on 310. Novak is on 308, but that will be broken uh, on March the 8th. So yeah, Novak has achieved that already. And then now you're looking at what can he can he get to? You know, if if he wins Australia, which would be a big big statement, defeating Medvedev, uh, going into the rest of the season, you'd think uh, winning Australia, he'd have a he'd have a good shot. You know, at at keeping that number one for for a little while longer. So he could reach 350 maybe even 400 perhaps i don't i think 400 is a bit of a stretch but yeah he could definitely reach uh, 350 if you know especially if he wins australia let me know what you think of the tournament how you've you know enjoyed it um what are your takings from it once again i would really uh, like to apologize for the lack of content but uh, yeah it's just just things have been a little crazy in my life and i hope you guys can understand and it was really uh, great great making this actually uh, and i can't wait to read some of your comments please do leave a comment uh, i'll try to respond to as many as i can and you know leave a like for the video uh, i i almost feel guilty saying this having not uploaded for such a long time but yeah please do uh, leave a like uh, if you haven't already please do subscribe content will be coming um, and yeah let's enjoy the australian open i'll um, i'll make a video for after the australian open as well so so yeah you can you can count on that uh, coming out for after the australian open it really is a toss-up yeah leave your predictions and uh, it was great honestly great uh, making this video and see you guys in the comment section